When I look back as a boy, before I had language for any of this, I think I was directly connected as in that innocence of a young boy, and the world always spoke to me through metaphor. I don't know why, that's just, I didn't even know that I didn't have that name metaphor as a boy. But whenever I was alone as a young boy, I wasn't alone. I was in a conversation with the universe and things around me, not in words, but when the wind would go through a tree, the, the pattern of that would speak to me. Then as, like everyone, as I moved into the world and I got drawn into having to make choices in the surface world and then worries and everything, that pulls us away. And then in my 30s, I think, you know, I always spoke about direct knowing, I always spoke about heart-centered living, but I think I was more in my head until my cancer journey. And then that just turned me inside, you know, inside out and upside down. Um, and through well wisdom on my part, I woke up on the other side, still blessed to be here, but I, everything had dropped into my heart. And ever since, my mind has served my heart and not the other way around. And years later, I discovered which, uh, this amazing saying in the Native American Sioux tradition, the longest journey you will make in your life is from your head to your heart. Not because we're stupid or slow or stubborn, but because it takes time to go from here to here. It's deeply reassuring to know that that's, you know, when I'm feeling um, impatient with myself, like, ah, again. Well, we are, attack and it, I, attack I learned, the problem with my head. I learned this so deeply during my cancer journey that we are uh, deeply patient beings, but we are also, in our daily life, incredibly impatient. But patience, everyone, when they're dropped into the depth of life, will need to listen uh, reluctantly to the God of patience. And it, it is a stubborn and wise teacher. If you think of those old, before we had digital cameras, you know, the original cameras, you would take a, a photograph, a plate, a, and it would have to be in a dark room immersed in chemicals and you have to wait for the image to show itself and it's a great that's a great metaphor because in a lot of ways still even though we have all these wonderful which i love technology all these tools but that's how it kind of works you know we experience things and in the dark room of our heart you have to wait for the wisdom and the learning and the insight to reveal itself Every time has had to struggle with this. Mm -hmm. um, the speed of the surface world versus the, the truth of the inner world. In our time, it's just accentuated because of all the technology. And there's nothing wrong. Technology, I believe, is inert. It's a tool. But if you don't meet the outer world with an inner world, it doesn't matter, I don't mean you have it figured out, but that you're committed to what we've been talking about, and you don't find your own way of engaging in that, then the way water fills a hole, the characteristics of technology will become our values by default. And now we're fast, and we're not in the same, we're in two places at once, and we're impatient, and you know, we're split focus. And great love and great suffering have always slowed us down to remind us that no, you can only be in one place at one time. And while the mind can tend to more than one thing at once, the cost is that your soul is on hold. <laughs> you're not present. And if you're not present, you don't feel the connection to everything. And the beauty about being a human being is that in a second we can get it back.